Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Divers Ready. My name's James, as always, so great to see all of your smiling faces, and welcome to this, the next in our series of videos that we call Quick Tips. Now, you know that every video we make on this channel is to help make you a better, safer diver, and you've also heard me say in other videos that the majority of dive accidents happen on the surface, either before or after the dive. So today I'm gonna to be giving you a rundown of some options for equipment that you can carry should the worst case scenario happen and either you drift off from the dive site and you're in open water all alone or the boat leaves you behind, what equipment can you rely on? Well, make your next dive on our subscribe button. I'll head over to the workbench and break it down for you. As you may remember from your open water class, the surface signaling devices that are commonly used by divers are separated into two categories. I would add a third, we'll get to that in a minute, but basically we're talking about audible, things you can hear, signaling devices, and visual, things you can see, signaling devices. So we'll start with visual. The most obvious, and I'm not gonna beat the dead horse on this because I've talked about it enough on this channel, and if I haven't convinced you to carry an SMB with you when you're diving in open water, uh, I don't know if I can help you any further by now. But yeah, the SMB, we have whole videos on the importance of diving one of these. I have friends whose lives were only saved because they were carrying an SMB. So for me, absolutely 100% of the time, no exceptions. Anytime we get into open water, I have a DSMB with me. So. That's one thing. Next up, we have a simple strobe. This is made by a company called Tektite here in the USA, in New Jersey, if I remember rightly, Trenton. Um, and it's a very simple operation. It's just twist it to turn it on and it flashes. That's it. It doesn't do anything else. This is all you need. Apologies for anyone with photo sensitivity. Um, but yeah, the, the thing I like about the strobe is long battery life. It lasts for, I think, 11 or 12 hours. So if people are out searching for you, you, you get blown off of a dive, you can activate this, tie it to your BCD on the shoulder, put it on a bolt snap, clip it up here on your tank, whatever you want to do. And it's going to be flashing whether you're conscious or unconscious, and hopefully someone could come and find you. Um, so big fan of carrying a strobe with me, particularly for search and recovery. Um, of course, I have a signal mirror. This is a very small little pocket signal mirror. This one is made by a company called Sol, Survive Outdoors Longer, S-O-L. So there you go. Uh, and it's got instructions on the back about how to angle the mirror, looking through the viewpoint there to catch the sun and to reflect sunlight to your uh, rescuers. Obviously, unlike the strobe, this only happens during uh, daylight hours, but useful Peter kit, doesn't take up too much space, super low tech, big fan. Uh, and then I have some fluorescein here, which my good friends at Divesoft sent me. Uh, thanks to Travis and Joe for sending me a few tubes of this. Uh, fluorescein is not new technology, but it is new in the uh, dive world. In fact, I don't know any other company that makes divers fluorescein apart from Divesoft. Um, but basically what it is, is it's a dye. It's an organic dye. In fact, in the EU, it's used as food coloring. Um, and it's been used since World War II. Fighter pilots used to carry this. And if their plane were to have a splashdown, they crack open the tube and sprinkle this powder out. And it, it mixes with the water and turns uh, phosphorescent. So it leaves kind of a snail trail across the surface of the water as to where you are and makes you much more visible to your would-be search and rescuers. So that's fluorescein. Uh, and then... The audible device that I choose to use is a whistle. Simple, low tech, again, compact, fits in my pocket, and I always have one with me. So your voice is boomingly loud, James. I've been told that many times before, but it will not travel as far as a high-pitched whistle like this. Um, so this will travel sound-wise a lot further than me shouting, screaming, or calling for help. So really good idea to get yourself a low tech, uh, little whistle like that that you can carry with you all the time. I'm not a big fan of those integrated honkers, hooters, because I think the temptation to use them on the dives is too much. And, uh, you know, there are dive guides here in South Florida that if they didn't have one of those, they wouldn't be able to guide a group of divers because they're just on it all the time. And it, you know how I feel about quiet diving, guys. You, you've seen the video, all right? So I'm not a big fan of those. If they work and if you use them responsibly, Fair enough, and they are very, very loud on the surface. I don't have one to show you, um, but for me, a simple whistle goes a long way. Now, as I said, there are visual and there are audible signaling devices. And then the third category that I would kind of put in now that the training manuals haven't really caught up with the technology and need to be updated uh, would be, yeah, technological communication devices or safety devices. So for example, I have the Nautilus, 
lifeline here from our friends in Canada. Um, this is a GPS marine rescue. It's a very simple operation. Um, there's three buttons. A blue button turns it on. A yellow button, I think, uh, sends your position. And the red button is a full call for help on the emergency signal. So any boats in the area listening in on channel 16 will get an emergency uh, beacon and locate you via GPS. So really useful tool. Obviously only as good as the batteries that you put in it. So you need to make sure the batteries are fully charged. Um, but yes, I think definitely something that has a uh, huge upside as long as you're a responsible owner of it and you remember to keep the batteries well charged. So there you have it. I know that Garmin make a GPS locator as well. Uh, I have asked Garmin for one. I have yet to receive one, um, but this is the Nautilus version. Um, a lot of people ask me for reviews of this product. I'm not exactly sure how you do that. Like if I go out and I press the button, is the Coast Guard helicopter gonna come and then give me a $10,000 fine for fake use of yeah i don't want to do that um so i'm not exactly sure how ex how people are expecting me to test this it's kind of like a uh, measure of faith you just have to believe it will work when you need it um so yeah guys you got any ideas on how i review these products i'm all ears let me know i can feel you guys reaching for the comment section and you can ask me a couple of things you're gonna ask me do i dive with all of these things on every dive and if so how do i carry them well, those are both valid questions, so let me explain. First answer is no, I don't dive with all of these on every single dive. Yes, I do every open water dive with a uh, with an SMB. I pretty much have a whistle with me on every dive, so that's one visual and one audible signaling device. Most dives, I carry a strobe, particularly if I'm diving at night, I'll always carry a strobe with me. Um, I nearly always have the mirror on me just because it lives inside my wet notes. Um, fluorescein is new to me, but definitely something I'm thinking about carrying in the future. And then the GPS radio also new to me, so I'm gonna consider the uses of that. All right, so let's pick and choose from this what I want to carry. Once I've done that, well, my SMB is gonna mount on my BCD as it always does, either with a bolt snap onto my tailbone D-ring or through bungees on the side. We've made other videos about that, so I'm not gonna go on there. Um, but what I would do for these other little pieces, I would just get a little pouch, something like that, or maybe a pouch like this one, which has two inch webbing slots. I can slide onto my BCD waistband or even just a little weight pocket pouch. Very, very small. That has a loop on the inside. I can clip things to that also can slide onto the waistband um, or I can fit a pouch like this into my uh, thigh pocket. And just, you know, this is something that I think a light came in once upon a time. Um, and it's just something that if I need it, if I'm in an emergency, I can pull this out of my pocket and get the tools out that I need to do the job. So not, not, uh, impossible to carry these things with you by any stretch of the imagination um, but yeah definitely pick the pieces that are right for you so there you have it ladies and gentlemen uh apologies for the mess in the dive locker in the background of that shot that you just saw there i'm in the process of packing for our group trip to the philippines we've got 21 awesome divers coming to dive puerto galera with us in the coming weeks uh if you guys want to join me on any of our dive expeditions you can do so through the link in the description of this video below or go to diversready.com forward slash expeditions for details of all of our upcoming trips i hope you enjoyed this video um i don't expect every diver watching this to run out and buy every single product but i will put links to the products in the description also so if you want more information but it's important that you make your own decisions and choose the products that are right for the type of diving that you do if you enjoyed this video if you did learn something from it give it the old thumbs up share it with your dive buddy and consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't done so already and i'll see you in the next video dive safe dive often